Oh, it is. Sorry. <laughs> Tara St. Louis here. And I have the distinct pleasure of bringing back a very an extremely popular guest, Emily Moyer. Her subject matter and her method of delivery and her you know, conviction to what it is that she's bringing is really making you guys sit up and pay attention. That's fantastic. So this is one I was going to say the third in a series, but you know what? It's just one in a really long series of talks that we're going to have that are going to be completely organic. One thing's going to lead to the other. And the main thing right now is that there, there have been a lot of people asking because Emily has made it plain that she is on a very special diet that is cleaning out her soul, spirit, body, everything. And it is in compliance with the, um, it's in compliance with the principles that she's being given now, that this download that she's been trying to give us. So, hi, Emily, please take it away. Hi, Kara. Thanks for having me back. Um, and thank you to everybody who's been weighing in on these. Um, I, I, it's been really, really cool, the responses that we've gotten, um, the questions, the other people sharing their interesting stories. And I've gotten, uh, both Kara and I have received a number of requests asking me to speak more about my diet. Um, I am to the point now where I get uh, more messages about the diet and candida and things like that than I do about anything else. Um, and so I'm, you know, recognizing that this, uh, people are interested in this. And um, it's also become very clear to me that I'm having to um, back, go get some solid uh, nutritional and scientific knowledge behind what I'm doing. I'm in the process of taking care of that. And it's also become clear to me that um, there is a space, uh, there isn't a, a space that needs to be filled in our community for, um, there's lots of nutritionists and dietitians and stuff out there. We deal with a very special community that people who are struggling with a specific set of issues. And it's become clear to me that, um, that some, somebody with some certain kind of nutritional as well as experiential knowledge of dealing with some of these things um, is needed. And I'm addressing that right now. And so I will be you know, available to help, be able to help people in a more substantial way in the near future. Um, yeah, so with that, let's get started. Um, before we get started, I just want to, there's one thing I wanna make clear. You guys will hear me reference a lot um, obviously, I will speak about Candida, and I will speak about my friend uh, Anne Baroque only because um, she's my friend, <laughs> but also be, only because this diet um, came from her and came from my, you know, the me living this way came from my experience with her. And I want to be very clear about one thing before I get started, is that um, she's not here, and she never, I never got a chance to speak about my ideas about sugar as programmable matter with her. So I have no idea what she would think about that. I don't want anyone confusing my ideas and my work with her diet. Her diet stands on itself. It's a very, she's, you know, she was top of her field in her, in, in the, on the issue of candida. And um, I, I hope, you know, maybe one day I'll get to have a conversation with her about it, you know, and I would like to think that she would find what I'm doing interesting and be, and, and have some things to say about it, but I don't know. So I don't want anyone to confuse those things. I just want to put that out there. Um, okay. So basically the diet that I eat is, um, it's a diet to keep the body clear of candida. And I met Ann Baroque um, four years, well, three, three and a half years ago, almost four years ago after, and I think some of this stuff I'll be repeating, but since this will be a condensed, uh, you know, this will be really about diet, well, it's all, all going to be here. I met her after hearing her on Mel Fabregas' show Sanitas, which was his health show he did for a while. I will include the link to that interview with her in the comment section of the Facebook post when you put this out so people can go and watch that because some of this stuff is best to hear from the horse's mouth for sure. And she's uh, delightful to listen to and whatnot. Um, I heard her and I, she was talking about candida and she had had um, multiple sclerosis and had healed herself of her multiple sclerosis by adhering to this sort of diet that she had created. And then she went on to work in the field and become very successful. I heard her speaking about candida and as she's sitting there naming off all of the symptoms or all of the things that will happen with someone with candida, I was like, oh, well, I have them all. I, and I had been struggling with a lot of health issues for the first time in my life over the previous few years and couldn't get to the bottom of it. I'm not a person comfortable with uh, doctors or, or going to you know, doctors. And I had tried all sorts of different diets, including many of the diets or similar protocols to the ones people are always sending me questions about. And none of them really worked for me. Some of them would be te would temporarily work, or they would make me feel better, but then ultimately make me feel worse. Others didn't work at all. Some were impossible to keep up with. 
Um, and I heard her speaking and I knew instantly that candida was the issue for me and that it was going to be a serious life change and I wasn't quite ready to make it. So I waited a few months before I went and saw her. And then when I was ready, I went and my life has never been the same since for a variety of reasons. Um, but basically the, um, you know, as we've spoken about, candida is a yeast that is ubiquitous everywhere in nature and on the human body. And once it gets, it's fine as long as it's in proper balance. And once it gets out of balance, it begins to sort of take over. And this, at, it can become out of balance based on um, uh, stress, chemotherapy, antibiotics, vaccines, you know, just poor diet and health in general, um, a variety of issues. And once it's out of balance, it begins to take over. It takes over, it, it becomes a fungus. The fungus then, you know, perforates the gut lining, allowing the, you know, yeast and fungus in, you know, into the bloodstream, you know, through the gut wall, and then parasites come. And then you're just, then you're basically, you know, so supporting something in your own body that isn't even yourself. And uh, from there, the, you know, just a tailspin. Um, so the, the diet is basically to do everything necessary to starve the candida out, to starve, to starve the, the basically you want to try and have as little things breaking down to sugar as possible because sugar is what feeds or possibly even creates, what creates yeast. Um, so that doesn't just mean sugar though, because a lot of food, all food breaks down to some level of sugar. We've talked about this, you know, the glucose is necessary for the muscles and then it releases also, you know, fructose, which is not, um, uh, you know, fructose, you know, sucrose, these other kinds of sugars are not really bad <laughs> for the body. Um, so basically uh, the diet is uh, more specific than that. And I'm going to recommend that everybody um, go take a look at her work. This is her book, Candida Cure. Um, it is sold out in a lot of places right now. And it actually, it, it may be a little while before it's, before it's back. But if people have, I think it's still available on Amazon or uh, eBay. If people have trouble buying it, um, please contact me and I will help you. Um, and uh, the detail, the diet is, very detailed in there. Like if you, everything that she told me in that first session, I had, you know, three appointments with her, um, you know, as a client and everything I learned in those is in the book though. And the book is a good read. She's a good writer. It's interesting. And there's very detailed information on there on exactly what foods are allowed, what foods are not allowed, uh, what kind of supplementation is necessary. There's, you know, all sorts of stuff in there. There's a, a, a information about what kind of water is best to drink. I'll, I'll get into some of that stuff right now, but everything that you, you, you can know everything I know about her diet, other than the experiential factors by reading the book. Um, but the main things are, it, it is the elimination of gluten, sugar, dairy, soy, anything artificial, and then further some other things within those categories. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are eating gluten-free either because they've been informed that they have some kind of uh, gluten intolerance or gluten allergy or celiac disease or something. But a lot of people are also doing it because they've, they've seen other people have success with losing weight and feeling better. So they're going on a gluten-free diet, but then what they're doing is they're replacing foods that have gluten in them with, a bunch, with foods that are gluten-free but are full of a bunch of other crap. Um, full of other grains that aren't good, full of sugar, full of, in some cases, dairy or all sorts of weird additives, fillers, and in a lot of cases, chemicals. Um, most, a lot of these gluten-free um, products are, are, they might have GMOs in them. They're definitely not organic. I also eat pretty much exclusively organic. You can't always control it, but I do the best I can to control that. Um, and so, you know, you don't want to um, replace the, you, you want to basically remove items that have gluten from your diet and not replace them with items with items that are just copies that don't have gluten but have a bunch of other crap. Right. So, okay. So, you know, um, it's not that it's never okay to have grain on this diet. I know a lot of people do diets with no grain and, and that those can work too. For me personally, it's necessary to have some because I exercise so much and I do so much physical activity that I need a certain level of carbohydrates. So like a diet that had no grain for me, um, I can't, I, I'm hungry all the time anyway. I just can't even imagine I'd be some sort of like ravenous monster. <laughs> um, but <coughs> the gluten, when you replace, when you, if you're not going to eat a, a bagel that has gluten, don't go buy the gluten-free bagels at the market. Just don't do it. There's a, there's a very few num uh, products on the market that 
can that are still clean that can that are gluten free. There's that you know, um, people can contact me. Uh, and one of the things I'm working on is making a list of foods that are like fun and satisfying and replace her food, kinds of foods like that, but that are clean and, and kind of go by all of the rules of the diet. Um, that will be popular. That will be popular. <laughs> that will be popular. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Anne also has a cookbook. The cook, I, I, I'm in a situation right now that I don't have hardly any time to cook, but she does have a great cookbook that has a lot of stuff in there too. It's called the Candida Cure Cookbook. Um, but, you know, so okay so that that's the issue with the gluten there it is okay to have like i eat like a brown a brown rice pasta once or twice a week i have a little bit of quinoa or some teff here and there but i don't go eating a bunch of other gluten uh, carbohydrates and grains as a replacement okay so then on to the sugar which we've talked the most about already so there is no sugar on this diet and no sugar doesn't just mean sugar it means not honey it means not coconut sugar not maple sugar none of those things the things that she, the only sweeteners that she allows on the diet are stevia and small amounts of xylitol. And I'm going to speak a little about xylitol right here because this is one that I, I myself and a um, number of people I know have some of the most issues with. It's the easiest one to fall into eating too much of it because they make all of these delicious xylitol candies. Yeah. And, um, so what ends up happening is you end up eating a lot of them because they're, you know, and I think that when we're talking about sugars, programmable matter, we're not just, de we're also dealing with this addiction to sweet. That is part of it. There is some sort of like entity, sovereignty stealing entity that exists in things that taste sweet that make us get addicted to them. And, and so we need to start dealing with that as well. And, and it, it isn't, you know, not that we can never have anything sweet. If we're trying to not have sugar. We can't just replace it with a bunch of other sweet stuff right? And xylitol, one of the things I just discovered about xylitol, actually I discovered it here. I, I was having, you know, I was eating all these xylitol candies and I was having a particular issue. And I had a, I intuitively knew it was the, the, um, the xylitol, but I didn't want to accept it. I even, I even think the xylitol could be some kind of programmable matter because when I eat too much xylitol, I also have some crazy dreams. Um, okay. but, uh, uh, and I'll get back to crazy dreams in a second because that, that, that is related to something that happened with the last show that we did. But um, <clears throat> the, what I came to discover, I was having some stomach issues. A lot of people say, have some stomach issues from xylitol immediately. That wasn't what I was having. But I came to find out that xylitol, because it's a sugar alcohol, which I knew, there's a bunch of other ones. There's like erythritol, malitol, a bunch of these sugar alcohols, which aren't sugar and aren't alcohol, but they have some properties of either one. They yeah. don't necessarily have a sugar count on them, though, so they're acceptable to eat for people who are diabetic or trying to avoid sugar. But right. what they'll do if you eat too many of them over time, it begins to ferment in your intestines. So mm -hmm. I know that I'm supposed to be avoiding fermentation, and so I just discovered this. So be careful of xylitol. So at this point, I'm not eating xylitol either. So the only sweetener I'm eating is stevia, which has its own set of problems, but not a set that are of concern for me right now. Um, I don't recommend anybody who's trying to have, get pregnant or anything like that to, to eat xylitol. And Sorry, stevia. There is a lot of other information out there about that. But for me right now, that's the only sweetener that I'm like, allowing myself to use. Okay, so... Um, all the other fun sugars like coconut sugar, maple sugar, honey, uh-uh. It's, it, uh -uh. It, 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 uh -uh. uh-uh. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Right, okay. And her program is a 90-day program, but that doesn't mean that after the 90 days you just go back to eating the way you did before. She has a maintenance section in here, um, and I'll address that a little bit more in a, in a moment, but it's not like you're never going to get to have sugar. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, so then the dairy, and then we know that dairy is your favorite one, and also – don't be eating any dairy while you have a cold or allergies, honey. Right? That's that, like that's the worst of that. The dairy, the dairy for me was actually the easiest to give up, and the one I struggle with the least, which I didn't expect. Like I, I, I did. I thought she like I loved cheese. I, I, I used to love me some Humboldt Fog. All of you in Northern California who we're going to meet shortly, you guys know what I'm talking about. I love, I love cheese. I didn't think it was possible for me to have a burger without cheese on it. I like ice cream. Um, and you know, I like coffee with heavy cream in it and whatever. Um, but that one was actually pretty easy for me to give up. And I noticed that was the one that immediately I stopped having, I had been having allergy problems. I had never had allergy problems in my life before. And then in like the last four or five years before I went on the diet, I was, had sinus infections all the time, colds all the time. And as soon as I stopped eating the dairy, I have not had, I have had in four years, I've had one small cold and it was after like 
a very uh, difficult traveling situation where I was like not, you know, not, it was just a difficult traveling situation. I had a cold for a couple of days, but yeah, there's nothing like not having to deal with the congestion and the dairy for me. So that, that made the dairy part easy. The dairy also, you know, it, it breaks down to sugar. It, it does some funny things. I'm not even sure why it is that um, humans would think that eating the milk of another animal how we got idea. there. How, how we got there. I know, right? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, Emily, you know, this visual that you gave us the very first time we got together of you waking up with candy in your hair. Yeah. With me, it would be melted mozzarella. Melted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For me, I, 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 you know, I like the, uh, the um, burrata mozzarella and the buffalo, buffalo mozzarella, that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, I totally, I mean, I used to, it, sugar wasn't the only thing I consumed in my bed, right? I, at a certain point, I was like, I, I, when I was very not feeling well, I was still feeling well enough to eat. And I would have all sorts of, you know, I had, and I, dra I drank a lot. Um, I was never an alcoholic or anything like that, but I mean, I'm a cocktail mixologist. I like making cocktails. And that's the culture we live in. I mean, it's a yeah. global culture, period. Yeah, you know, um, I, and I don't drink, I never was making crappy ones that were full of shit. I was always making good ones, but they still had sugar and alcohol, alcohol is sugar and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. Know, um, <coughs> he had a great post on Halloween where he said, um, funny that we fill kids up with sugar yeah. and then send right. them out to get filled up with spirits. Sugar is programmable matter. Hashtag, he hashtagged that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And then it brought me back to the whole thing. Oh, that's interesting. You know, look at, they call alcohol spirits, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it breaks down to sugar in the body, but also with the level of cocktail mixology going on for, it used cocktail mixology is an old art. It's not yeah. a new thing. It's been reborn, but it used to be that you know people would go to the bar and the, the barkeep they called them barkeeps would right. make a concoction to, to you know for to help them with the things that were ailing them and they used a lot of really cool stuff really cool botanicals and tinctures and stuff but there was also this sugar and in my head the first when i think about this and you think about spirits i'm thinking about the entities we talk about that are the parasitic consciousness that are latching on to the sugar as it breaks down in our body and that's right. the way in right. so Okay, so that we've, ta we've talked about the, the gluten. Sugar and milk and gluten. And the dairy, okay? And the next thing is soy. Soy is an evil demonic crop from hell. It, it, it is. It, there is no such thing as a naturally occurring soy. It was like the first GMO thing. It's different than the GMOs that they make from Monsanto. Like, yes, you can get organic soy, which is better to get if you're going to eat it. But the whole thing with soy is just a nightmare anyway. It has a lot of estrogen in it. It creates... Uh, you know, problems for men, you know, like men and a lot of foods are full, filled, filled with soy, uh, soy products. And it's part of this whole feminiz feminization of men and over estrogen for women. And it's just bad. Don't eat soybean oil. Don't eat, uh, don't, you know, every once in a while, if I go to like a Japanese or a Korean restaurant, I might take a little tofu in my soup which anything is okay to do on a very rare occasion. In fact, sometimes I actually think it's healthy to challenge your body with something it's not used to receiving. Uh, and just like you, it's good to get a little cold sometimes to build your immune system and whatever. But yeah. yeah, soy is just like a demonic little food that is not not good. And certainly people eating that as a replacement for pr protein and meats and things like that, bad idea. Yeah, yeah, bad yeah. Idea. that's really where it comes in. I never ate soy until I decided I didn't want to eat meat anymore. Yeah, you know? that's and in my house, that's the big war right now. We neither one of us eat meat, but my husband really needs something. He needs yeah. something that I'll address. The, I'll address the vegetarianism. I'll address the vegetarianism in just a minute. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah, I went through only one phase in my life where I was eating a lot of soy, and it was like the weirdest thing. It like made me look like I was pregnant, which immediately led me to know why it is that there's all these estrogen. I mean, I'm a little person, and it was like weird. Like my stomach was just sticking. It was bizarre. Um, yeah. So that yeah, the soy is not good, and the next part I'll address is the artificial. You don't want. We're not like we. Um, we're not. We're if we're real, we don't want to eat things that are artificial, and particularly artificial sweeteners like Splenda and aspartame and things like that. Guys, Splenda is made from the E. coli of fly poop by Donald Rumsfeld. Go look it up. This is not. This is part of warfare on your body. It is also addictive. All those artificial sweeteners. Um, uh -huh. are designed to create, to force the brain to want more and more and more and more and more. Diet yeah. Coke is, if you're going to, if you have got to drink soda, drink soda that has real sugar in it or whatever it is opposed to, opposed to any artificial sweeteners. Diet Coke is worse for you than drinking a Mexican Coke. Go get a regular Mexican Coke that has real sugar in it and that's better for you than the Diet Coke. 
and it's more satisfying as well. But it's not going to feed the addiction if you already have it because it's a different substance. Right, right. So next I want to address the, the uh, vegetarianism. Um, I was a vegetarian for 15 years and a vegan for one year. So I understand all of the, I understand the desire for that. I understand the moral issues. I still, I, I'm still at, you know, it's, I, there's not a day that I don't think about the moral implications of eating meat. Um, but I had gotten, you know, I, I was a vegetarian from about 1988 or 89 till about 2002 or three, something like that. Um, and I was a vegan for one year in there. And over the course of those years, I managed to destroy my gymnastics career with that. Not destroy it, but weaken it and limit it. Um, and I also just didn't, for a person you guys see here who has so much energy and is, you know, and whatever. So I didn't feel that way. I always felt tired. I felt cold. I felt, you know, I just didn't feel good. And, um, but I was very committed to this not eating meat thing. I'd had like a weird experience with the recognition of that the meal I had just eaten at one point had come from a field of cows that were just outside the hotel we were staying at. I, it bothered me. And I went on this thing for a number of years and I still, I still struggle with that. But I woke up one morning in about 2003 with the taste of blood in my mouth and I went and um, looked up on the internet what that meant and it meant that you were iron, severely iron deficient. Like it literally tasted like copper, like penny, like I had pennies in my mouth or something, you know, yeah. like copper or iron. And so like literally I, you know, so I went and ate steak that day and like my body sucked it up like, uh, like it, I can't tell you, like, like immediately started to feel better. And I've heard of other people who've had that same response and others who feel differently about it. Um, but for years after that, I was, I felt better eating meat, but I still was not optimal health. And, um, the, the ben whatever benefits may have come in the beginning from being a vegetarian were very small compared to the benefits that came to me from eliminating gluten, sugar, dairy, the things we've talked about here. So for me, those eliminations are more important. And if I then go and try and eliminate meat on top of that, then I'm left with very little to eat. And this, I will, I'm going to be honest, this diet is a lot harder to do if you're a vegetarian. Not that it never happens. Um, I, you know, like I know that even Anne went through a period where she was eating vegetarian. Um, but if you, for particularly for if vegetarianism is a little bit easier to deal with in the maintenance portion for the first 90 days if you can bring yourself to eat some fish or eat some chicken or some or you know, certainly if you're a vegan to start eating some eggs and whatever it's going to make it a lot easier um and you know i think in a perfect world you know or a, or a world where <coughs> humans were really completely in charge of their own destiny and, and their own will and all of that kind of stuff then we might we might not need to consume meat. We are in a situation of day to day spiritual warfare, and and it's yeah. this, and and this is part of that. And you know I don't um you know we 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 spend most of our day having to expend our energy doing things that we don't want to do to pay the bills. And so when it comes to the things that we actually care about and are important to our development as uh individuals and as a group of species together sometimes we have very little energy left for that and at yeah. this phase i feel like the protein is important to that for me also it's important i um i'm a little bit of a different case i exercise a lot and i everything i do is very physical and i bring maximum energy to everything i do the way that i do this diet is a little different than the way most people would do it i consume more protein and more fat than most than like than the diet prescribes but that was agreed upon when I was on the diet that that was something that was kind of necessary for me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I build muscle at a pretty qu quick pace. And, um, you know, I just, I, I'm, one of those people, I'm kind of hungry all the time because I'm always moving. And the protein and fat helps me to be satiated in a way that prior only right. eating a whole bunch of carbohydrates or sugar could make me feel satiated. Right. Right. So that's the issue with the, I, I have, um, complete respect. I, I, for, I, I'm not interested in telling people they should or should not be a vegetarian or a vegan. Right. Um, but right. sometimes you need to do something for a temporary period to regain your health. And then you can, and then you can go back to, you know, to doing the other. Um, but this is not, I'm not here to make moral judgments or tell people what to do or anything that way. Um, right. It is possible to do the diet without eating meat. It is much more difficult and you're, it, you know, it's much more difficult. Um, okay. So those have addressed most of like the dietary parts of it. Again, there's way more information 
in the book, but you know, that's like a kind of a breakdown right there. There's also what's really important is supplementation because the food that we're eating does not have the vitamin mineral content that of the food that the food used to have. And that is um, completely by design. One of the things that's really interesting is our lack of minerals in our food is directly related to our desire for sugar and the ability to use sugar to program us. And um, when I first went on the diet, uh, I, she put me on a supplement. She has, an, she has a supplement line that is still available, um, and, but she also teaches you how to put together your own supplements if you don't want to buy the ones from her, whatever. She completely believes in people being responsible for their own health in every single way. Um, but she put me on a supplement to help reduce the sugar cravings that is just totally full of minerals. And it, I would never have gotten through the first month without it. And when I go through phases where I'm feeling like I'm craving sugar and whatnot, I will go back on, you know, I'm on, I'm on a pretty strict version of the diet right now. I'll address how I cycle the diet in just a minute, um, but it does help me. And so it is interesting to me that as our food has become depleted of minerals, there's been more and more sugar in our food. Um, so those two things are, are related. They have an inverse relationship. The lack of minerals leads to the desire for sugar and, and the, you know what I mean? The, the overconsumption of sugar um, is also related to the shortage of, of minerals in our diet. So um, I think that's kind of interesting. So supplementation is important, um, you know, and is a much better answer, in my opinion, than pharmaceutical drugs. There isn't, you know, like our bodies are very intelligent and with the proper nutrition and supplementation know what to do to heal, our, to heal ourselves. And, you know, we have everything we need in nature. There's a few, once you get to an extreme case, like she had, you know, if you have some extreme autoimmune disorders, there may be a few things you might have to play with pharmaceutically for a little bit, but the idea is to, you know, move off of those kinds of things. And she addresses some of that in the book. For any of you that have autoimmune diseases, like particularly multiple sclerosis, or um, if you guys have irritable bowel syndrome, all, any of these other, or any, any autoimmune disease, there's tons of, auto, tons of autoimmune diseases out there. She does have another book called Healing Multiple Sclerosis that is more addresses the, uh, issue of autoimmune disease it contains yeah. all of the, most of the information from the candida book within it. It's a bigger book, but it's, you know, has more special things to people with autoimmune. I know there are a lot of people out there with them. It, it's rampant. Um, so yeah. that there is that book as well. And that one is, uh, is not, that one is, is, for, is totally available right now. Um, okay. So how I deal of the other, this, how, how I deal with the diet basically is when I did it the first time I, it was a 90 day thing. And since that first time I've, always been on some form of it. Like I, you know, I, I've modified it to suit me a little bit more in, at times. And I go through phases where I'm more relaxed. Um, but my, mo the messiest my diet ever gets now is still way cleaner than most people's diets and way cleaner than my diet used to be. We're yeah. human. We're here. It's hard to be on a diet all the time. Um, I'm not perfect. I like, I like, and I, and I, um, and you know, that wouldn't even be part of being perfect. There's no such thing. I like fancy food. I'm not going to lie. I like to eat in fancy restaurants. I like to have some cocktails. I love pizza, you yeah. know, I, uh, stuff like that. So I, I give myself, I, you know, like right now I'm on a really strict, I'm basically on the same thing right now that I was on the first time I ever did it. And within that, I give myself one treat a month, like one cheat day a month. So I'm on 90 days right now. I'm about six weeks into it. So I've had one cheat day, but even this time with all, all, this is the first time I've done the diet hardcore since coming across all of these thoughts and feelings and ideas about the sugar. So when I had my cheat day this time and I had some sugar, like I enjoyed it sort of, but afterwards I was sitting there and I was like, it was okay, but it wasn't that good. And did I just fill myself up with a bunch of programmable men? You know, like it was I that am, you know what? So I'm yeah. getting to a place of consciousness where um, the, the treats so, like, you know, is it's a weird thing. Like if I, and I have to admit that I've spent some time struggling with this. Like if I come to, if, if I'm able to confirm that sugar is, I mean, I'm pretty sure it is, but if I'm able to confirm not only that sugar is programmable matter, but how the whole, our body works as a technology in ways with all of this fungus and yeast and things like that to, to help control our minds, then that leaves me at a space where I'm going to have to decide whether I want to be a foodie anymore. And I don't know, I'm, I, 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 that's a funny place to walk myself up against, but you know, it is. when you get, you know, this, but it also tells me that we're actually really getting somewhere when we get to the point where we have to make really difficult decisions, then we're there, we're there. 
And yeah. it's, you know, this, that's why it's so important that we have this conversation and it isn't just about me having the conversation or me and you having it. I love hearing from all you guys. People have gotten to me with some really interesting ideas and information that will be addressed in future, future chats. And, and I love that. Like we're onto something here, even if it is just metaphorically, because that is so much about how we deal with our reality is through metaphor and through analogy, even if it's, but, but I actually think this could be a metaphor that is actually scientific is actually the truth. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're here with it's always nice because there are people for whom that science you know that that's what yeah. they need. at least a certain per, per percentage of whatever proof you give to them it's always better if it can be quantifiable yeah reproducible all that sort of stuff but you're right about this because a think about what it, think about the social programming that is the food the foodie yeah you know this this culture this beautiful see we're in love with it i'm in love with it this beautiful julia child oh my god i love watching the chef shows and you know all that stuff became love to us it became love to us mm -hmm. very much part of the social engineering now and when you start to really yeah. break it down like emily's breaking it down you're dealing with social stuff again all of a yeah. sudden you're not just dealing with your own social stuff you're dealing with hardcore hardcore what makes us it now i yeah. don't know about 200 years ago god only knows how do we know but um right now th then you're dealing with your family and how do you socialize with your friends and all of those things that go along with um yeah you know? so this is a big deal it really is a big deal but she's right she's totally i know she's right because because I knew the food thing was the direction we were all going to have to head in in some way, shape, or form. Because I knew we were being conned big time. And, and, and as soon as you realize McDonald's is killing you, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're, on, you're on that path. And it takes you wherever it takes you. But I will say a couple things. First of all, there's nothing wrong with fat. I eat avocados. Yep. I eat a ton of fat. Yeah right a tons of fat your body needs it but be very like for me i'm gonna say because i don't know what your dad your information is from the diet but what i will say is coconut oil mm -hmm. i will say um all really good olive oil but be very aware what's in it because yep. that's one of the things that they put crap in oh my god um and and um I don't know how she feels about nuts. You can tell us about that yeah, later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, nuts are great. Like nuts. Uh, uh, um, on the when you're in the the beginning stages of the diet, there's a more restriction on which nuts you can have, and peanuts are a never no no because peanuts have yeah. parasites and they're not yeah. really nut anyway. They're delicious. The peanut butter is delicious, but yeah. Sorry guys. Um, it's a bee. It's so a bee. The like almonds are like the <laughs> important part is to eat raw nuts, uh, almonds, walnuts, um, macadamia nuts, um, pecans, cashews are a no no in the first 90 days. Later, they're okay, and same with pistachios. But the most important thing is to be eating raw nuts that are organic, that don't have a lot of crap on them. And same with like the oils. Like, I agree with you. I so the fats that I eat, I eat or, organic, you know, olive oils, I eat coconut oil. It's important, guys, to do to get high quality ones. Don't buy the cheap, crappy one. Um, but the biggest, the fat that I'm most reliant on and that I love and just makes me feel really great is the grass fed butter. Um, I eat the grass fed butter. And that also really help. I find that that helps a lot with the sugar and the gluten kinds of cravings. You, if you uh, are feeling like you need some sugar, just go get, even if you just take a little piece of it plain or put it on something or whatever, the grass fed butter and it, it takes care of some of that sugar craving. You know, people drinking it in their coffee now, that's like a big trend. Yeah. You yeah, know, um, this, this diet is a no coffee diet. She is opposed to ca both caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee. And I generally don't drink very much coffee, don't drink it. I do like the taste of coffee. So once in a while I will have some, if I, I try and have decaffeinated because I don't need any more energy than I have. I drive myself nuts, um, <laughs> but I like the taste of it. Um, and when I do have it, I do have it with um, the grass fed butter in it and some, you know, you can add, put all sorts of, you can do all sorts of interesting things with it with grass fed butter and almond milk and lacuma powder. And, and either, there's all these superfoods you can add to it. You can get your coffee. Actually, you can get, if you do Dave Asprey's bulletproof coffee, you can yeah. get it. So it's like tasting like a frappuccino, but doesn't have anything bad for you in it really. So, but be careful with too much coffee because of it does there are there are issues and it's addressed 
in her book. Yeah, yeah, and I love butter too. I'm, I have to say, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that brings me right back to Julia Child, who said she wanted to be buried with a stick of butter in each hand. Me too. Uh, me, grass-fed butter. Yeah. I want to be buried with a stick of grass-fed butter. Um, <laughs> but I also eat eggs. That was the other thing I was going to say. I, I, eat I eat a lot of eggs. I eat one egg every day, even though I am a vegetarian, because my husband, my joints, my knees, you know, mm -hmm. my knees. Sorry, eggs are great for eggs are great for a lot of reasons, and there are certain people that have certain health issues that where they need to be careful about the amount of eggs they eat. But if you don't, then eggs are great. Um, eggs are particularly good at helping to starve uh, candida. There's some, for some reason the makeup of eggs or you know whatever is in it, whatever it is about eggs, they're particularly good for that, and they're also very filling. A hard boiled egg is very filling if you're having trouble staying full. Um, Okay, well, so you, need the, you need the cholesterol that's in the egg. You need it. You need the cholesterol. Yeah, yeah, guys, you need fats, and you need. And you, you know, I I have much more success with a high fat, high protein diet than I ever did with any kind of low fat diet or anything like that. Um, you know. So, uh, okay, the next place I wanted to go with this um, a quick discussion on water. Okay. Um, I drink distilled water. Um, I get distilled water from one of the oldest springs in the in the country. It's very expensive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, I also put shungite in my water. Uh -huh. um, it tastes great. I like things that taste really minerally, and the shungite makes it taste that way. Um, yeah. A lot of people are really into the alkaline water, the Kangen water, um, so that, which is okay. I totally did not find any success with that, and when I switched to distilled, I, I actually, people want to go out there and listen to some, I think his best interview was when he was on with Robert Phoenix, but if you want to go listen to Andrew Norton Weber, he's an expert on distilled water and also on um, Orin therapy, which is a completely other issue that I'm not opposed to, but I've just never really gotten super into it. Um, but distilled water for sure. Like I, I noticed a lot of the different, a lot of change when I did distilled water and did distilled water. Um, you know, but make sure it's a high quality one. There's also there are all sorts of um, things you can do to structure your water. I don't necessarily have time to do all this stuff, but I know that there's like um, uh, the fourth phase of water kinds of information. There's some different people out there that sell structuring systems. Um, Jeff Harvey was, had one before he passed that Randy did a show on. You guys can go look at Randy's um, archive. Um, Seven Bomar creates a water structure. There's lots of people who are doing it. Um, so water is really, really important. Yeah. When um, I was in the States, for sure, I drank distilled water. Okay. Yeah. People say don't drink it, but that's nonsense. Just don't buy it from Walmart. Because don't buy, that, also, you if you're drinking distilled water, you need to be on supplements that have minerals in them because there is no yeah. minerals in, in distilled water. But the minerals that are in the other water are crappy. So you, yeah. it's better to have water without minerals and then to take high quality mineral supplements. Yeah. Um, okay. So I just want to address really quickly how I deal. Well, there's a few more things I want to address, but how I deal with the diet, like I said, I kind of cycle it. Um, what I basically do is I do like the strict form of the diet for, for 90 days. And then I relax a little bit for 90 days and then I do it again for 90 days, you know, and then I relax it for 90 days. And when I'm on the strict form, I'll allow myself to have a cheat once a month or so. And when I'm on the not strict, less strict version, when I say less strict, it, I, I just mean, I don't add a bunch of other weird foods and I pretty much eat the same thing always, but I just allow myself to have more cheat days. So when I'm on a less strict form, maybe I'll have a cheat day once a week or once every other week. Um, right. Some people try, what they decide to do is bring in some more questionable foods into their daily thing. And I've experimented with that too, because like, you know, yeah, like we all want to have like something that tastes good today every now. But what I found with that is it just leads to wanting more of that, more of that, more of that. And I do better with just like, excuse the term, but I do better with just being a Nazi when I'm, when I'm doing it. And then when I'm having a cheat, just fuck whatever I want. Like I don't even try, you know, not even, not even a binge, but just like not try and control. If I want to go out and I have a cocktail and I'll have ice cream and I'll have pizza and then I'll be done with it. And then I move on. It, it's a lot easier for me to, to do, to control it that way than to try a little bit of treat here and a little treat there. And a, Cause then you're just eating straight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I that, that's, that's for me, but there is, you know, there's not, the, not everyone has to do it like me. There's uh, advice in the book on how to do a maintenance program and, and, and whatnot. But really, like, I'm pretty much to the point now that 95 to 97% of the time, I'm eating the way that I've just described to you. I keep it pretty, pretty Nazi-like most of the time for myself, partly just because I found that I perform at the highest level when I'm doing that. Right now, I've been on a super strict diet for six weeks, and I'm getting 
more accomplished than I have ever gotten accomplished in my entire life. I wake up at seven in the morning and I am busy till I go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night, but I'm getting shit done. And like, I have, I have a lot of years to make up for because I had many wasted years of my life. I mean, they're not wasted because they led me to where they are now, but you know, I haven't always been the picture of health. I had a lot of health right. issues. I had a lot of destructive behaviors that I worked through and right. the diet really helped me because what started to happen is when, you know, I, as I spoke about the first time we chatted, you know, some of the, my, I really started to deprogram when I cleaned up my diet and it also just really helped to hold a mirror up. Like once I had my diet clean and everything else was still a mess, that didn't make sense. And I had to go about starting to rectify those things and to uh, whittle away the inconsistencies in what I thought was appropriate and what, my behavior and what I, my words were saying and what my actions were and holding yourself to uh, being honest with yourself about what you're eating in your diet is great practice for becoming honest with yourself, becoming impeccable with your word, becoming impeccable with your commitments to people. And these are all things that I've become, I've had to, I mean, I was, I was a loser, dude. I was not going to make it. Uh -huh. you know, I was like, I was, I mean, seriously, I was going to die with, in my bed with candy, a very smart person who had a lot of ideas, but was not capable of making anything happen. I, I knew most of the things then that I know now. I had been doing research for many years, but it was just eating me alive. This is the information that we all deal with who've just chosen to be on this path is not easy to deal with. It is traumatizing. Right. No, it's messed so I, up. You know, it, was, it is traumatizing. And I was destructive in every way you can imagine. I had you know, eating disorders, self-harm, lots of other things, all kinds of, you know, I was going to die in my room ha knowing everything but having done nothing. And... For some reason, the diet snapped me into the space where I really began to align my um, align my here and now self with my highest self, align my words, my actions, and whatnot. And that's you know that's something I really want to. As I move into working in this field, you know, I, it isn't really only about diet. It's about using your diet and your body to help you re become realigned with who you were in the beginning and who you want to be in the end. You know what I mean? And, and you know, vibrate, the closer you come to vibrating at the frequency of your highest self, the faster we're going to get there. We all need to be doing this, you know? Um, yeah. So the other thing, you know, so that's kind of how I deal with the diet. I have a lot of like things that I've learned to eat that help me. And like I said, as I, as I compile the information into understandable tracts of it, tracks, I will have it available for people. Um, I, you know, one thing I will say is you will be hungry all the time on this diet. Um, and to me, that is how I know I'm doing it right because your metabolism is getting really clean and really fast. Your body's working through stuff. It's not hanging on to crap. And, you know, you're just not hanging on to sugar. It's not hanging on to fat. It's also not storing the trauma associated with those things anymore. So there's going to be some, you're going to have to learn to deal with a new set of, of thoughts, feelings, emotions, because there's not going to be fog. So everything's going to be clear, which can be great, but it can also be terrifying. Yeah. You know? And um, the uh, hungry all the time, like, while it's annoying, I've come to find out, and in fact, a client that I work with had, was just saying yesterday about how, you know, sugar is, it is programmable because it basically, you know, it tells you, it, it, the sugar and the parasites that love it basically tell you to stay seated on the couch, you know, you can, and I think about it, when I used to eat sugar and gluten, I could get full. I would get full and I would feel satisfied, but then I would just sit there like a, like a paralyzed, tranced out person, you know right. what I mean? And now, right. while I feel kind of hungry all the time, it's part of that, that, that sort of keeps me in motion, keeps me moving. I get, you know, like I'm able to get a lot of things done and um, I don't have that paralysis that I used to have. I don't have that. Um, you know, I remember like I could sit, I, I could sit in my bed having eaten, you know, some big glutinous meal and a, a bunch of candy and I would sit there like a person who just had a heroin fix, you know what I mean? So, um, the sign when you're feeling hungry all the time, in some ways that's a sign that this is working and there are tricks, you know, you can do to make yourself feel satiated and full. At least for me, it's hard. I'm just always eating and it's a constant cycle. But one of the other most important things to do with this is exercise is really important and i don't expect everybody to exercise on a level that i exercise for me it's necessary otherwise i would never sleep at night and i'd be driving you all much more nuts than i do <laughs> um and also i just i was an athlete from the time i was a kid so for me it's natural um we are, we're all here um with different magic and to fulfill different roles and part i've come to the understanding 
that part of my magic and part of the role I play has to do with my kinesthetic awareness and my, my abilities as a physical being. And the best thing for myself and for all of us is that I keep myself in really good physical shape. And um, that doesn't mean that everybody else needs to do what I do, but, but everybody else does need to be at least in a, you know, a certain level of good physical shape. But also yep. part of the thing with the exercise is this. Some people are not athletic and that's fine. You don't have to do anything more than walk. You really don't. But if, especially while you're on this uh, diet like this and while you're dealing with the kind of information that we deal with, like, guys, some of the shit we talk about is fucking ugly. It's hard. It is. You know, like, when, you, when you come to the, the, the realization that like, we are, you know, that, that we're living in a, like, you know, uh, we're living in a time and in a space where there, there's war being conducted against us every day and in every way. It's, right. that's enough to just you know, make a person want to give up but once you you know start to deal with this information it's hard to deal with it every day and one of the things with the walking that it, it's try and walk almost every day try and walk for at least 45 minutes and i'll tell you that's what it doesn't matter how fast you walk yep. i i learned about something when i was going through a particular kind of therapy for trauma and this therapy is called emdr it stands for eye movement desensitization reprocessing and it's based on right left motion to help a person deal with traumatic traumatic memories or ptsd and what happens is any kind of when i was doing the therapy it was in the therapist's office and i had these things in my hand that would vibrate the right one would vibrate the left one would vibrate the right one and i would be holding on to these things while we talked about stuff and went over these traumatic experiences and whatever. And what, what the right left motion does, which can also be accomplished by walking, running, dancing, things like that. But it brings after, after 30 minutes, it will bring both sides of your brain online at the same time, which normally only happens in REM. Most, right. most people do not ever have a moment during their waking life where both sides of their brain are working online together. That is right. the best. That is the best space to deal with any kind of uh, trauma, memories, feelings, all that kind of stuff. From so, when you walk, it takes you about thirty minutes to get to that point. And anybody who's ever done significant exercise knows that. Oh, after about thirty minutes, you get into like your groove and you're rolling. Well, that that's a physical thing, but it's also a mental and emotional thing. So you want to walk for at least forty-five minutes, so that once you get to that point, you can have fifteen minutes of being there to deal with it. And when I was in the early stages of both this diet and then also of cleaning up my life, like really, like I'm telling you right now, guys, maybe one day I'll share some more things about my story than I already have. Uh, I'm just, not, you know, I've shared a lot uh, over the couple of time I've been with Randy. If people want to hear some of my things, you can go back to the very first interview he did with me. But uh, in the shows I've shared a lot, maybe I'll share it more at some point. I'm just doing it at the pace that I can cope with it at, um, you know, in the beginning stages of putting myself back together, I would sometimes walk for three, four hours a day yep. because yep. it was the best, you know, also I find that if you're going to take in the kind of information where if you listen to a lot of podcasts that are difficult material, sometimes it's best to do it while you're exercising because you can then move the information through your body. It's not getting stuck in whatever your trauma point is. So yeah. movement is really important for processing trauma. The body stores trauma guys. The body is a, we are storage devices and everything that has ever happened to us is stored somewhere in our body as a traumatic right. memory, as a good memory, as a smell, you know, smells bring memories up. It's stored in our bodies. And if you can get your body to, you know, stop holding on to the things that are terrifying and start letting you deal with it when your brain is in the best place to deal with it, which is when both sides are working together, when you've got your right. male brain, your female brain, your creative brain, your intellectual brain, everything firing together, you're going to have the best result with dealing with difficult stuff. So that is why the exercise is so important. And then, right. you know, and then also just having, I'm not a religious person, um, but have some kind of spiritual practice that you do whether it be and i don't mean spirit you know i'm not like i'm not a super spiritual lala person but some something you do that is like a way of communicating with your highest self and that you know that really helps you know find that connection to like who you were in the beginning before we had all this crap piled on us and you know who you want to be at the end who are really the same person like that is your center point that's your zero point that's who you really are and you need to be communicating with that. Don't channel other bullshit. Channel yourself. You, you, all the wisdom you need to heal your body, heal your mind, and to make yourself the, into the person that you really want to be is available to you already. You just have to find a way to connect with it. And be nice to yourself. Take time with yourself. Um, 
you know, it's important to have people you can talk to this about. That's, you know, I'm working on a situation where I think what I want to kind of do is use, you know, become, you know, a person who helps people use their body, their diet, their, uh, their body and their diet to ultimately uh, help deal with the traumas of their life and transform their life. Uh, Cause it's all, it's all, you know, there's a lot of people out there who've done a lot of work at trying to deprogram themselves, but they're still really unhealthy. And then you have people out there who like are seem to be really, really healthy, but they're obviously not dealing with what's going on with their emotional selves and the traumas that they've been through. And it's, we can, you can, the body is, is an amazing gift. It's really smart. It can help you deal with all of the mental things and all of the emotional issues. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm available for people, right. You know, I, I, you know, I've worked, been working a little bit in the background with a few people as clients. And I also have done a number of chats with people just, you know, uh, just for just having conversations with them. Um, I'm, I'm busy, but I do try and make time at least a couple times a week to, to speak with people about this stuff. Um, and I will be moving into doing this professionally in the, in, in the next year. Um, and I, I will always keep you guys updated on the things that I'm, that I'm finding. Is there so any. Get with, get with Emily. <laughs> get with Emily. No, the stuff. no the, just, just in complete agreement about so many things. Uh, it doesn't matter how far you walk. It doesn't matter how fast you walk. It matters how long you walk. Yep. Always and I'm going to sneeze. And you're just going to have to live with it because I have a cold. Make it a good one. Make it a big one. Make it a really good one. Okay. <laughs> no, it went away. Oh. Yeah, Damn. Man. I know. You oh. promised. You promised. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll have no doubt that I'll be sneezing over the, at some point, you know, over my career here. Um, the other thing I was going to say, though, Em, was uh, you talked about um, not, you know, those periods of your time where, of your life, which sounds like it was a good chunk where you had all the data you had everything except the will to, yeah. to start the will to enact yeah. this is eternal these are the eternal parasites that we feed yep. this garbage sugar particularly anything fermented right that we can where we really can't see them we're just now starting to learn how to recognize that they're there below in a dimension that is below our common knowledge and that it exists within us and they have they're the ones who have a hold of our will yep they have a hold of our will therefore if you don't if you do the sorts of things that emily is is is, is detailing in depth you starve them out as well yep yeah yeah and this then, yeah for sure this well. is this I, I'm just going to read, and I hope she doesn't mind. I'm not going to say who it is, but I'm going to read the message I just got from a client that okay. last night that I've been working with and that has found some of the things we've been talking with to be helpful. And this is what she um, said. She said, there is, she realized that there is a correlation between sugar, gluten, and inertia. It is like the parasites talk in your ear and tell you not to bother moving, and also the state of crash after the sugar. It is like your body also becomes addicted to that, not only to the sugar, but to the inertia as well. I was... Uh, and then she said, uh, she said, the next comes the part where the emotional part of feeling like shit about yourself after you have, you know, sat around in, in inertia and the down, downward spiral continues from there. You know, and that she identified exactly what the issue is. And the parasites want to, you know, they want to consume the sugar that you've consumed and then make you, you know, and then have you sit still because you have no energy left after they've, you know, eaten, you know, sugar right. is real good energy but it does provide the zoom they take that and they leave you sitting there on the couch like shit about yourself and you're like, hey, i guess i'll go have some more sugar and it's just you know an endless an endless loop you know i had an interesting other thought about um when you just brought up the fermentation yeah you know, there's a lot of people who don't like this the idea of not eating the fermented foods i right. didn't think so either i you know trust me i'm jewish i like pickles i love going to a korean oh, restaurant and having kimchi i used to like kombucha I feel so, I don't eat it anymore. I feel so much better. I'll, every once in a while, I'll let myself have a little kimchi if I'm at a Korean restaurant. That's it. But think about this. The fermentation in the body, it's like pickling yourself. Like when you're dead, they embalm you, which is kind of like pickling you. So like the fermentation in your body when you're alive is like being like you're beginning the pickling process or something, right? It like, you know, and alcohol is similar to that too. Like you're basically pickling your liver and your, your organs and whatever. But yeah, I just felt like, okay, we're turning ourselves into pickles from the inside. Um, <laughs> You know, the second favorite food now, right below cheese, is you know the 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 kosher dills. That, you know, <laughs> so they're they're ah, great. It's ah. so good. Um, you know, but it, I, interesting also that the, the that the, the pickles are related to you know uh, you know like people associate them with being Jewish and Jewish you know uh, you know 
Passover dinners and stuff like that. So interesting that the pickling, and there's always wine at these things, and the pickling is always related to the other mind control, which is religion, you know, right. which we also right. spoke about some with, in, in a program with Rock Estal, I was telling you about. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a couple before we go, there's a couple things also. Kara asked me to mention this um, that um, you know I, the, before we did the last show. Also, I want to apologize. I did get some comments that I spoke too quickly in the last show, and I probably did a few times here as well. Um, I, I felt very um, fidgety and stuttery in the last one. Um, I had had a very disturbing dream the night before. Um, I tend to, I have this thing, and I, maybe others out there do, when I fall asleep, forgetting to turn, unplug the router, because I have a 5G router, they forced it on me. I have, I always have strange dreams, but I have, these dreams feel very synthetic, they feel very inserted, and some of them are quite disturbing when I sleep with the, when I fall asleep with the router on. And I had a dream that was so disturbing to me that night before we did that, that like, I woke up in the or fairly early in the morning. I could not go back to sleep, and it terrified me to the point where, like, I was afraid, like, afraid to come on the show and talk about what I was going to talk about. And I don't like, you know, I don't think there's a lot of people out there who are like whistleblowers who are talking about information that is like, you know, volatile. And I don't feel like that. But this is a bit. It's not like that. This is a biggie, right? Like, literally, like, if we can bust this whole thing open with the food, then all that other shit is actually not even going to matter that much, you know? That's right. That's right. Yeah feeling like somebody, you know, like I, I, I didn't, I came on and spoke, but I was definitely shaken by the dream that I had. And so I apologize for any um, stuttering, stammering, fidgeting, and anything that was unclear. And if people have any questions, I'm happy to address them in messages or chats or whatever. But, um, you know, also when you, you know, sometimes when you go through the, the programming process that happens when you clean up your diet, uh, which I am, I'm on a pretty strict diet right now, even though I'm cleaner before, but I'm clean all the time. I'm super clean now. So some of these things that come out, you have clarity in dreams that sometimes is a little disturbing. And that's why it's important to have people to talk to, to deal with it. And also the exercise can be really helpful. And the last thing, if you don't have any more questions before we go that I want to ask people, um, you know, everybody's been weighing in with some of these things, ideas about sugar and diet. There are certain people that I'd be really curious to, if you have certain kinds of knowledge to hear from. Obviously, I would love if, to hear from any, um, if, we, if we have any doctors, naturopaths, scientists, nutritionists, anything like that. I'm just saying, and if any of you hear this, I would love to um, have a dialogue respectful that you know you can even i'm totally fine with it with disagreement as long as it's respectful and intellectual right, um, right. i'm interested in hearing from people who are experts on crystals uh, on crystals um the kind that we like you know but i think there are some relation to storage of information and things like that um i did ask some people i did find out from some people about some of the issues um about window about the windows that are in crystals and that they that sort of attached to the idea that they're used to peer into somebody's soul so if uh, there are windows in the sugar crystals then that might be a way of directly programming into somebody's you know like the way that you direct a specific program based on personality type or soul type um so that was interesting to me i, I need to do way more looking into that i haven't had the time um, so I'm interested in hearing from people who are experts on crystals, uh, both from the metaphysical standpoint and also the idea of crystals being used to store information or in technology. I'm interested in hearing from people who have knowledge, knowledge of references to food in the Bible. Um, there's a lot of them. And I think uh, the more and more I think about this, I really think that the Bible is a code for about care for your body, care for your DNA and the, your diet. Um, I've always thought it's a code about, <coughs> but I'm really starting to think that, that it's basically maybe telling us what happened to us based on the things we've, we've consumed. Yep, yep. Any people who are out there who are, um, for, who are biblical experts in the food department, I'm not a religious person. I'm not interested in being converted to Christianity or anything like that. But if you're w willing to have an intellectual conversation about yep. um, references to food health and the body in the bible then i would love to hear from you so that's three more shows <laughs> yeah so um yeah and, and I'll, but also just all of the little ideas that you've been sending me certain things that they've thought um and mccarroll thank you for all the things you pointed out to me they gave me a bunch of things to look into um yeah and i, I really am loving hearing from all of you i love having these conversations with you care i think it's we're making an icky topic kind of fun well, yeah. yeah. And, and by the way, by the way, this, uh, you just, I mean, you just, you just whizzed right by this, um, this windows in crystal, crystal and windows and looking into the soul, which mm -hmm. the soul 
at the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing, not just in terms of um, controlling, mm -hmm. the, you know, us at a deep level. But if there's also this whole thing about moving souls around from one place to another, yeah. and you know what I mean? Yeah. So, which is not a topic I like. That's one of those things that pissed me off so much for a long time that I refused to, to entertain it. Yeah. I'm not even sure I entertain it now. But yeah. it's like uh, it, that idea made me, that was, that made me angry, that idea that that could happen until I realized that our soul is not our highest self. Yeah. So, there's something way up here. So, so one of the things that Randy and I have spoken about for a long time is this idea that, you know, maybe for everybody, but certainly for people um, who were original souls on earth, or, or, you know, we talk about the 144,000 from the Bible really being about the first, the, the original group of souls that were here. Um, but so for people who are original souls or people with certain family genetics, bloodlines or people who've been part of projects that we definitely, believe that the way that they're doing this is they've been tracking our soul frequency our, the, our frequencies which is related to our spirit and our soul and our spark and all that kind of stuff but they've been tracking us through incarnations and so they're basically able to sort of know when one of us is coming in and yep. create the body and the life to capture this pro it's a different way you know uh, robert duncan has a book called project soul catcher he's talking about something a little different but this is like another way you know, of catching it and imagine if they know where a soul is and then they can use crystalline substances in the body to sort of peer into that and, mon and that, that may be part of how they're tracking the evolution, the development of the soul in this lifetime. Um, also, a lot of these things that people find in their bodies related to more gallons or crystal-like substances, these, uh, this can be related to catching somebody's soul or peering into somebody's soul, you know, or programming, you know, like programming the soul. You know, when you're saying that, when you're saying that, it makes me wonder if um, the move, the ridiculous, ridiculous move from breastfeeding to sugar-filled baby formula, was sort of an instant way, instant way to start catching people. Yeah. I'll catch, catch the soul there. I can catch the soul right there. I'll yeah. just make sure it never lashes onto its mother, and the first thing I'll fill it with is sugar. Well, I will, yeah. I mean, think about so you know, I, I think I brought this up in another talk somewhere, but you know. Uh, the level of uh, blood sugar is a huge thing. Uh, I, I, I'm moving into thinking in some ways about blood sugar and uh -huh. think about it. I mean, red hot chili peppers had an album called blood sugar, sex magic, right? Okay. Yeah. That, the most famous album was called blood sugar, sex wow. magic. And I'm starting to think that whatever the, you know, the sugar can cause some kind of think about that. Like is the blood sugar related to the ability to perform sex magic? Red Hot Chili Peppers, if you look at the initials also, it's RHCP. And for some reason, this is funny. I had this thought about the Red Hot Chili Peppers on a day after we had done one of our, our first talk. And I had lunch with somebody that we were talking about some of that. And I was walking through a parking lot and I saw a license plate frame that said yeah. RHCP, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. And I yeah. thought, oh my, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And my head went, RH, like the RH negative people, RH copper people, because copper is what determines the different blood types. The level of copper in the blood yeah. is right. And they always talk ah. about the blue bloods as having a lot of copper in them, and that's why they're yeah. blood. So I was yeah. looking at that and I went, RH copper people, blood sugar, sex magic. Those are the people, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, 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 there's so many codes passed along to us through there. But yeah, I think, I, I wonder, I mean, think about it. Like, a lot of people I've spoken to who've been a part of projects, like they have memories of consuming, you know, either, you know, before or after tasks, like a lot of, you know, garbage food, sugar, fast food, things like that. And, you know, having done icky kinds of things or being, been involved in icky kinds of stuff. Is there a relationship? Like, is, is there some relationship between the level of sugar in the blood and these kind of, you know, satanic and sexual rituals? Um, uh, the ability to perform, to use certain energy from the bodies to perform certain kinds of magic. I don't know. I'm not saying I know, but these are just some of the things that I think about. Um, also, what is diabetes? Like, what it, what is that exactly? I mean, we all know what it is, but you know, there's yeah. But what actually is it? Yeah. What actually yeah. is what? it? And you know, like the um, there's you know the and type one and type two are not exactly the same thing. Right, right. You know, like it's it, it's um and then the people who are diabetic, what is what is the deal with the insulin? What is it doing? You know what I mean? Like what is the the whole like these are the areas that this is part of why I would like to hear from 
from, you know, some people with some more, you know, medical or sort of scientific and nutritional knowledge. But what exactly is this? And why is, you know, we have sugar and everything now at the same time we have the diabetes exploding, right? Like every, right. so many people are diabetic now, right? And they're so yeah. like, you know, and these are people who at this point now, if they don't have their insulin, they will die. Like, what is, what is this? And is this related to some of it as well? Like, is this, um, are these people whose bodies are rejecting the program that sugar is, or are these people, people whose bodies are completely, uh, have been com completely received the program and now, uh, you know, they're done. And so no more sugar. I don't know. I mean, I'm just supposing. Yeah. Or I, maybe are these, are they people who bought, whose bodies just simply cannot fight off the sugar anymore and they can yeah. be, because your sugar level goes, it skyrockets when you're diabetic and once you're yeah. So I don't know. They've lost their their defense system against sugar has collapsed. Yeah, against sugar has collapsed. Have Supposedly, you, that's have you looked is. at like sometimes the skin of someone who's diabetic and it like looks to not like real skin. It looks more like fabric sometimes, and it's like very strange texture. And our skin is both uh, it's our biggest organ. It's our line of best line of defense, but. Yeah. It, it, it's also it's a it's a biological technology that they would love to turn into a different kind of technology. Like I feel like a lot of the stuff that goes on with like Morgellons and some of the other thing I call it like a skin suit technology kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like they yeah, want yeah. to turn our skin into like um, you know some sort of thing that can just be you know programmed through frequencies. It doesn't even have to go into the body. So yeah, that's, yeah look at that. Sometimes take a look at the skin of somebody who's diabetic and it's unusual looking. You know. Um, yeah. So yeah. So these are all things to think about. I love hearing from you guys. Please, um, ch please chime in. I tried to talk a little slower this time. I hope it was better. It was brilliant. It was brilliant <laughs> as always, and it will probably be back next week. The way that right. this thing is progressing, it's fantastic. So I'm going to let Emily go, and thank you so much, Em. This is like I've tried, I have tried to say this as many places as I can say it. This is some of the most original thinking that I'm hearing, period, anywhere thank right you. now. You thank know. You. And that's what we need. We need to get the hell out of the cul-de-sacs yep. and start doing the original thinking. We're doing the original thinking. We need to start saying the original stuff, yeah. right? And you guys, okay. let's all, you know, let's all start eating. Let's all start taking care of our bodies and, and really like, you know, like we're like, take care of our bodies because we're special. And like, if there's going to be something changed, something happened, it's going to be us who do it and try different things. And let's share information about this. And like, let's, you know, let's like, let's take care of ourselves and take care of each other. And we can move this, move this ship forward. Finally, you know? Right. Okay. Emily, thank you. I'm going to let thank you go. You. All, All right. right. Have a good one. You. All right. Bye.